Hey guys, what's up? I'm back with Unity once again. I've been sick for a week and a half and I could not use my brain very effectively, so I didn't do anything, which is terrible because I, I meant to do quite a lot. Uh, what are you gonna do? I was sick, I was sick. Now I'm finally back to it. I'm finally back to, to dealing with stuff. My first real project is trying to do... Um, I'm using Unity 2D and trying to do every platformer trope that I can think of, which is, you know, just the, the basic stuff of platformers that you could think of, um, side to side teleport, if you jump off the, the right side, you get to the left side, which is what I'm going to show you today, a tower platformer that you keep on going up and things are created and you keep jumping up as the floor gets up and all kinds of other things. And today, I finally, it took me a couple of hours, but I finally managed to do the side by side teleport and I wanted to show off as usual, because that's pretty much what I'm doing with these. I'm showing off. So I'm going to press play, and you can see uh, Larry. We're going to call him Larry, because Larry is a very tri triangular name. If you write it down, it's all all the letters can be made to be triangles, and I decided that my I'll be a triangle. Yes, this is Larry, anyway. And um, Larry can double jump, which is pretty nice. This was the easy part, making him move and everything like that. You know, it's just tweaks. The basic movement, I know how I wanted to do it and it was just tweaks to, to stuff that, that I'll have the movement just as I want it. It's really, really smooth, fluid, comfortable, and very precise. The way that I did the double jump is when I actually do the jump, what you do when you, when you um, create a jump is you actually apply force towards up. You have the physics engine and you apply force upwards, and then you just get the jump, and it's nice, right? Because you have gravity. Now, if I, in the double jump, I'll just apply force again, What'll happen is that I'll apply force to a, um, a body that has velocity, which means that if I apply force at the edge, then it'll be at just at the at the pinnacle, then it'll be the, the best jump. But if I apply force immediately, then it'll jump way up, way, way up, because you'll get a huge burst of force while you're, you have more force. And if I'll jump after it's already going down, there'll just be a little bit of tick, and it won't really be a double jump. Hopefully what I just explained is understandable. What I actually did was when I pressed the double jump, I set the velocity, the um, vertical velocity, the Y velocity to zero, which means that no matter where I am in the jump, no matter where I am at all, I'll get a full second jump. So it doesn't matter where I am, I'll get a full second jump, which is kind of nice. That's the way I like it. There's a million ways to do double jumps jumps and double jumps, that's the way I like it. It gives you a ton of control. It makes sure that it's always consistent, always exactly what you want it to be. And uh, that's the way I like it. Also, at the pinnacle of the jump, if you do complete double jump, it should be about 40% of the screen, which it is about 40% of the screen. It's just tweaking the values. Uh, that's how I feel is comfortable and that's what I like. So that's what I did. And uh, yeah, that's a double jump. That was the easy part. The second thing that I wanted to do was this. Okay, when you jump off the right side or the left side, you get on the opposing, the other side, okay? The opposing side. This is really easy to do in the sense of position. What's difficult to do is this. Now on both sides at the same time, if you notice, you can, you can, like, you can see the edge of me, right? This is difficult to do. This is very difficult to do. And I don't really know, I didn't really know how to approach it in terms of uh, rendering it or, or maybe cameras and stuff like that. I'm not familiar with those, with the graphical aspects of the engine. So I asked online on Unity Engine, on Unity Answers, and what they replied was this. You need Unity Pro. <laughs> there is an option to, to deal with render textures and all the, those things, but those are very, very specific and you can only use them in Unity Pro. I'm a... I don't have Unity Pro and I don't intend to get Unity Pro anytime soon. So I had to think about a different solution. And I had a different solution um, before. I just wanted to see if there was anything else that you could do that was more real, more with the actual rendering. So the kind of, you know, not a, a real solution in the sense that I'm not rendering half a sprite here and half a sprite there is what I am actually doing. And you can't see it, but there's actually two. There's Larry, okay, again, we're calling him Larry on the, on the left side right now, and on the right side, it's actually a clone. It's not really Larry. It's a clone that I created, 
And when I, I pass the threshold, when you can no longer see Larry on the left side, when you can only see the clone, what I actually do is change the position of Larry to the position of the clone and then destroy the clone. So this is Larry again. So again, I'm going on the right side. On the left side, there's a clone. Larry is completely not visible anymore. And when that happens, I teleport him and destroy the clone. And now this is Larry again. Now, what happens in the case where there's a clone on the right side, but I, uh, I don't want it. I, I, decide, I decide to go right, okay, instead of completing that action. Then when the clone is completely off the screen again, I destroy it as well. So I have one condition to create a clone and two conditions to destroy the clones. Now, originally what I did, the reason why it was kind of hard, I actually cloned Larry specifically. I cloned Larry, and that meant that clones could create clones, and that, would, that was an issue, that was a problem. So I completely scratched that solution and changed it, and now I, I create a clone that's imperfect. It's not exactly Larry, it is a different class. I have a class, I have Larry as a prefab, and I have Larry clone as a prefab. A prefab is, um, let's just call it a thing that you can create. So, I create an imperfect clone that can't create its own clones, in a way, and um, that's pretty much what I do, and it works really, really well. I mean, you can see that I'm on the, I'm on both sides, and I can jump, and it's exactly the same. Both of them move the same, both of them jump the same vertically. They look the same, and there's probably like two two uh, lines, vertical lines of pixels that you can't see, so it's not completely perfect, but that could be tweaked, and it looks it looks good enough. It looks really, really good enough, it feels incredibly smooth, and because I know there's, there's two of them, but I can apply whatever I want, whatever script I want to both of them, which means they'll both die, um, or you'll, I mean, I can control both of them completely and utterly, which is the important part here. So that's what I did now, it's pretty fun, it works, I'm really happy with it, it took me a little while to get it correctly, but it works, and I'm happy, and that's it, wanted to show off again a little bit of Unity. And uh, next I have a lot of other stuff that I want to do. I want to do a couple of basic stuff that shouldn't be too hard, which is just create spikes or things that can kill you and then restart the level, as well as actually have a level, an exit, and when you reach the exit, you move on to another level. Those are all not difficult things to do, but I want to do them, right? And uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's Larry. He can move around pretty comfortably, and that's all. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.